we'll be talking a little bit about uh, bloom and muscadine vines. Uh, this is South Georgia and we're in the second week of June and we're about two-thirds through the bloom season for our muscadine vines. Generally the muscadine bloom season is fairly late in the spring uh, which is beneficial because it means you're going to avoid most chances of frost on the muscadine bloom. So where do you find the bloom? Well you find it at the base of the current season's growth. Uh, you can see it here as you go down the chute and here you have the bloom at the base of that shoot. Uh, it's usually anywhere from the second to the fifth node um, from the base of the shoot where you'll start to see bloom. So as you use your first node, here on your second node you got a flower, third node you have a flower, then it skips one and then you have a flower on your fourth node. And it blooms sequentially starting from the base. So here's your oldest flowers. You can see most of these have already been pollinated starting to set the berries. This cluster is right in the midst of, of being open and receptive to pollen. Uh, this is a female variety, so you can see here the anthers are shorter than the stigma, and we'll have some pictures at the end to help you identify whether you have a perfect a male or a female flower um, vine. And then this cluster has not opened yet. So a lot of times some people have a little bit of question about whether they're seeing berries or whether they're seeing the um, immature buds of the flower. So these are the buds, they're uniformly green, uh, they're covered on the top and smooth, whereas these are the berries. Uh, you can kind of tell them being different because they have where the stigma was, it's usually brown, it's got a little speck on it, and it has a point on the end. Uh, and so, especially if you have all three um, stages of growth there. It's relatively easy once you get used to it to be able to pick out whether you're having um, immature flowers or whether you're seeing berries. Also when you have a full cluster like that and it seems like everyone's there, that's almost certain to be flowers. Uh, and then as they begin to set and swell, uh, they'll usually drop a fair amount of the berries, especially in the female varieties. So a berry that's set in clusters Oftentimes, by the time the berries are growing, you're only going to have a few of the berries left. And so that's another way to tell whether you're looking at immature buds or um, developing berries. Here we have a male flower cluster. Note that you can really see the anther sticking up there. And there's a lack of any of the green pistil in the side of the anther. And you can really tell that when the, um, the anthers subside here. All you're left with is kind of a yellowish nub there with no pistil and no berry forming. Uh, in the wild, half of your um, vine, muscadine vines will be male like this, and of course will then no, not produce fruit, uh, but they are needed to um, pollinate the female vines in the wild. Now since we have perfect flowered cultivars, we no longer plant male vines in our vineyard to plant the females. So commercially you won't be able to buy any male vines, but you may see them out in the wild. Here we're looking at the flowers of the self-fertile variety, Triumph. This variety produces pollen, so it can pollinate both itself as well as another female cultivar. And it um, produces berries. Most vineyards are a mixture of female cultivars and then self-fertile varieties interplanted amongst them to produce pollen for themselves and the female variety. So if you're planting just one variety, you want to be sure to get a self-fertile plant so that it will have viable pollen. If you're planting more than one variety, then you can have a self-fertile and a couple different females if you want to have the female. Generally, the female varieties a lot of times have a little bit bigger fruit and a better fruit quality. And so that's why we're still using the female varieties. The self-fertile variety, you can tell it because you can see the, the anthers and stigmas. They're very showy and they extend up above the, um, where the stigma is. And we'll have some pictures at the end that show that a little better. But when you can really see kind of like a cloud of anthers around uh, the, the cluster, that's how you know it's a self-fertile. The other way you can tell is that it's actually usually a bigger cluster on a self-fertile variety. Self fertiles are actually a mutation of a male vine and male vines have bigger clusters than do female vines. So here's a cluster of a female vine uh, which we picked and you can see the female vine much smaller cluster than the self fertile. 
And in general, uh, you'll see that when the berries form to a female cluster. Usually it'll just have just a few berries. Whereas a self-fertile cluster, a lot of times will have a much bigger cluster. And so if you're seeing a large number of berries per cluster, and generally if you're seeing a large number of, of berries on the vine, that usually means you have a self-fertile variety. So you can see here, here's another quite large cluster with many berries on it. Uh, and that was a great thing in terms of yield when they first came out with them. If you look like something like a noble with the bigger clusters, produces more yield and that's why it's such a good juice cultivar. However, we are getting into a little bit of trouble now with the self fertiles and having too much yield. Uh, the first self fertiles had a relatively small berry size, maybe six, seven grams. And so you could have a fairly big yield in terms of number of berries on the vine and be able to ripen them. But as you got bigger, um, get into things like Delicious, which is what we're looking at here. And Delicious is going to have more of like a 10, 11 gram berry. And when you're seeing this amount of berries, it can just overwhelm the plant and be more than it can handle. And now that we're getting self-fertile varieties like Pauk and Ruby Chris, which are up in the 14, 15 gram berry size, it can really be just too much fruit on the plant. And for that reason, we have to watch these new cell fertiles and maybe thin the crop load, either by taking some of the berries off by hand or ideally in a bigger setting, removing some of the fruiting spurs so the plant's able to ripen the berries and get good bricks and get the um, earlier berry harvest that you want. Here is a close-up of the three different flower types you can find on the muscadine vine. On the far left is a female flower. On the far right is a male, and in between is a perfect flower, also known as a self-fertile flower. Female flowers have um, stamens where the filament is very short, and that means it leads to the anther being located below the stigma on the pistil. Male flowers have much longer filaments, and the anthers will be held well above the flower. And then a perfect flower has a stigma or, and, and pistil like a female flower, but you also have the very long filaments and the anthers will be held well above the stigma on the pistil. Now a female flower does have filaments, anthers, and it does produce pollen, but the pollen that it produces it lacks any functionality and cannot germinate and pollinate the flower whereas the pollen produced by perfect and male flowers is able to germinate and fertilize the, the flower. If we look at the full cluster, and here we have a female cluster on the left and a perfect or self-fertile cluster on the right, you can see the first thing you notice when you look at a female cluster is you can very clearly see the pistils sticking out. And then you have to maybe look a little closer to see the anthers and the short filaments. Whereas the first thing you see on a perfect flower is the long filaments with the anthers held well above. And so it makes kind of like a cloud of anthers which surround the cluster. And that's the primary way I usually tell where I'm looking at something that's either female or perfect. Now be sure when you look at the cluster that you are seeing the anthers, you don't want to look at an older self-fertile where the anthers have fallen off and assume it's female. You really have to do look close enough to make sure that you are seeing the anthers so that you can tell are they short with short filaments and located below the stigma? Are they long with long filaments and held well above the stigma? And that's the way you tell whether you have a female vine or a perfect vine. So remember, if you're out there looking in the wild, you only see males or female vines. Whereas if you're looking in a vineyard with a vine that you know you've bought, it's either gonna be female or it's gonna be perfect.